What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Flask with Python tutorial video. In this video what we're going to be talking about is a little bit more on Jinja templating in general. So obviously we already know about logic and variables and stuff like that, but there is a few other little subtle things that I find myself needing fairly often with Jinja, so here we go. So first of all, I've got init.py open up here. Um, I'm going to come down and just grab a function somewhere if I can find a decent one. I'll take this one. And I'm just going to come right underneath it and start a new one. Uh, this one we're going to call Jinja Man. Jinja Man. And the template we'll call Jinja Templating.html. Okay? So now we need a Jinja Templating.html. So let's go ahead and put it in templates. Uh, so new file, Jinja. Actually, we have ginger templating.html. Cool. Now, uh, we need to populate this with some data. Instead of going through and writing it all like we did in a previous tutorial, uh, the link to this text based tutorial is in the description. Head there and you can grab the starting information for this template. It should look basically just like this. And let's make this a little bigger. So, in the previous tutorial, luckily, we weren't really doing anything that was super important HTML wise, but it was kind of hard to see the HTML. Sometimes I forget to zoom it in. I hate to program with it like that big, you know, I want it small. Anyway, uh, so first of all, what we want to do, let's grab some variables to pass through. Now from the, the tutorial itself, I'm just going to take what we used there. Uh, so we're going to pass the following data. So it's too big as well, but I want it so everybody can see it nice on the video, but it's hard sometimes. Anyway, uh, so here's some data we have. We have a regular number 15, then we have a string 15, then we have a another string that says Python's good, then we have a, an apparent list, and then we've got some HTML here, okay? So that's the data. Again, you can either write it out, write something similar, or just kind of follow along. You don't actually have to type all this out to get the value out of the tutorial anyway. So we'll just save that. And I am, I think we're done actually with this. I'm not sure we're gonna visit this again. So I'm gonna close that. And let's go ahead and run a reload. And I don't know if I have this, let's see. So let's try it reload. I noticed that before, uh, it's weird, on my other server, uh, a service Apache 2 reload, no problems. It, it really does refresh everything. But lately on here, I've been having trouble uh, having that actually refresh everything. So I don't know. Maybe my awesome answer for everyone wasn't so awesome after all. Anyway, so here is the uh, URL, and that's Gingerman there, and we just don't have anything here, so there's no data there. So now, uh, what we want to do is um, we want to start referencing some of that information that we passed through. Ah, we got to open up the init file, and I didn't pass it actually through. <laughs> what an amateur! All right, Ginger. Man, there we go. Uh, we need to take data and pass it through. So data equals data. All right, good to go. Let's re let's reload Apache. Are we still restarting Apache over here? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Okay, let's do a reload and see if that actually uh, works for us. So let's run that. Although of course we don't really have anything to test that, but we'll see in a moment if that worked. So uh, we bring this up, and then what we're going to do first is like we can just iterate through um, the data. So we can do something like this. We can say, uh, let's just say for D in data, and then we'll come down here, close the for loop, and for, and first let's just iterate out the D. <laughs> I'm immature sometimes. All right, so. Bam, refresh. Okay, so so we at least have the data and let's instead, let's iterate out uh, per paragraph. So it's like separated nice and pretty. Uh, we'll refresh again. Okay, cool. So 15, 15, we can see obviously HTML is not gonna treat a string any differently. Python is good, cool. 
Uh, we got our list here. And then we noticed something pretty interesting is that we passed the string of HTML and it actually came through as HTML. And let's say it says, hey there. So, hey there. You'll see that it actually converted it to the little special character. So, it's not actually a, a real character. It's a fake one. So, uh, so we have that, that there. And so, the idea here is to talk about how we can handle for strings and ints differently. How we can, you'll see what I mean. Well, how we're going to fix this statement. How we can iterate through this list. And how we can make that actually HTML. So there's our list. We'll just come right below it. Let's add a horizontal row and let's begin programming something else. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll say something like this. If data one, so the first if element, so this is zero if, this is the first if, that was a string, if I recall right. That's my hope anyway. Ginger. Man, I, I keep having to open this. Right. So the zero or the first if element is actually you know the second element, which is a string. So it's a string 15. So what we can say is if data one, and then uh, we can convert it to an int by doing this, int, right? If you want to convert something to a string, it would be string. Notice that it's this little bar, right? So just to show you that we convert it to an int, and we're all we're all fine with that. If it is greater than ten, which it should be, let's end if, uh, and we'll just we'll just have it print out. Uh, true like that okay now we'll run this all at the very end uh, you'll just have to take my word for it it'll it's gonna work out so <laughs> next what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a, uh, a replacement function so uh, let's do um, so for data data two so the third element there I probably should just leave this open but that's okay this is the Python is good string Okay, I'm just gonna put it over here on this monitor. Okay, so that is the Python is good string. Now what we can do is we can run uh, a replace. Now some people are like, hmm, could we just do like replace like this? No, you can't do a dot replace. That would be, it's a bar replace. Now, uh, so bar replace, and then we wanna replace good with freaking no, it can't be freaking. That's absolutely absurd. Freaking awesome! Exclamation mark. Okay, so that's a replace function. Now what we can do is uh, finally let's do uh, let's add another horizontal row. H four horizontal row. Make some space here. Um, then what we'll do is uh, what well, let's say four lang in so here we have a list of languages right python java php sql c++ um and they're but it's a string it's not really a python list so what we would do in python is you would you would split it right so for example for data let's say for lang in data three and then again i ask is it a dot split or is it a bar split it's actually a dot split, so you probably got that wrong. So <laughs> dot split, uh, and it will be by a comma, and so then we've we've basically converted that to a list and n four, uh, and then we'll come over here and p p lang. Actually, to make this really right, I didn't do this in the write up tutorial, but to do it the right way, probably would be something like this. So unordered list, and then it says that it'll be list item. This would be the more common way you would use that. Okay, so we convert it to a list, output it, cool. So we'll see that when it's all, all said and done. And then finally, to display um, HTML like this, uh, you, ha you add a little bar safe. So, um, so what we would do is, you got, well, obviously we're not going to need paragraphs there. So that was data, the fourth element, and then you do this bar safe, okay? And that'll actually allow the HTML to be executed. So let's go ahead and save that, and we'll come over here and let's run it or refresh. Hopefully, no errors. Cool. Oh man, we got we. We're that's not an error. We're just stupid. 
but well I'm stupid I wonder if anybody hopefully some of you guys uh, didn't make the same mistake as me but that's a variable so let's save that try one more time oh my goodness oh my goodness it's too late for me at the moment and it's raining outside okay I live in Texas it hasn't rained in like <laughs> I don't know like eight months and uh, we're getting a bunch of rain right now, and it's just, I, I don't know how to handle it. I haven't had to mow the yard in eight months. That's how I know how long it hasn't rained, because I've just, the yard is dead. <laughs> anyway, um, my life. So we've got um, the true statement came through no problem. We did our replace, no problem. We converted our string list into a nice HTML list, and we converted HTML. Uh, and actually display the HTML. Now, Flask does have a built-in string template, right, that you could do, but this is for like short SQL blurbs. So like, let's say you've got a database where like, for example, uh, you, if you have something like, uh, oh my gosh, it's evading me, WordPress, right? Everything you enter in WordPress goes to an SQL database and then it, it displays it back on screen. So you've got a lot of HTML stored in the database. Well, natively with, Flask, if you read SQL from a database and go to display it, it's going to look just like this in Flask because that it, Flask considers that dangerous. So you have to opt in basically and say, hey, this is okay. Now there is a back end option you can change um, and you don't have to worry about it so much. And, and it's like basically the opposite. You would say this data might not be safe or something. But anyway, this is the default. So that's how you do it. And a lot of time, like if you uh, use, like we had to do safe with our, uh, when we use the charting application, that name is evading me too. I'm telling you, it's the rain. It's killing me. Uh, high charts. There it is. <laughs> that needs it. And basically anything that's going to return some HTML that you're then going to pass through, uh, you're going to need to do that. So this one's probably the most valuable of everything so far, but I've needed to use all of these. Uh, so next, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about macros just really quick. We're going to basically just run right off of the, uh, the docs here. So these are the docs. I can't remember if I showed them in the very beginning. Again, I'm claiming rain for this. Now, uh, so you should definitely check out the docs uh, from time to time. It's just like bootstrap, right? Like every time you start a new project or you sit down to work and you're trying to figure out how you might go about doing something, it's always a good idea to check out the docs. And by checking out the docs, I don't mean, I don't think anybody else really means, I don't think anybody, maybe the first time someone will sit down and read literally through the docs, but generally like when I go to visit some docs, I just like look at them and I go like this, like all the way through. I'm like looking at comments. Like I had never heard of comments until really recently. I did not know how to comment with Jinja and bam, got that figured out. And you just kind of scroll on through, just kind of trying to pick up some stuff. Now, anyway, moving to macros. Um, this is some good information <laughs> here. Uh, and I, I think this is like just super cool. So what you can do is you can take this macro and it's like defining a function in Python. So we're just going to literally copy and paste from the docs. Uh, I'll try to recall or remember to put the link to the docs in the video. I might forget, but you can always just do Jinja template docs. Okay. And you can figure it out. Also, this URL is not too difficult. So we'll come down here and we'll add another horizontal row real quick. And we're just going to copy and paste this macro. Uh, the idea is that it, it's a macro for any input form. So anytime you want to pop out an input form, instead of having to type all this nonsense, you just simply create the function and bada boom, bada bing, you've got your input form, which is ex especially useful, especially if you're always classing something the same way or, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of some other good examples, but uh, a lot of times when you have like an input or form, you've got names, values, and IDs, all that need to be populated. So every time you're just throwing in all this nonsense where it could be quite a bit simpler. So uh, that's just a quick example. We're, we'll just save that and run that real quick. Uh, so there you have it. We defined the function for the input basically here. It's called a macro in Jinja, but think of it like defining a function. Um, so there's your macro, we defined it, and then we called two instances of it here. So already saving space, having it. Um, one thing you might be curious about is these dashes. You notice these little dashes uh, here. 
Now this is just some real leet uh, Jinja, I think. I have never seen the dashes until I looked at Jinja <laughs> documentation. But they're kind of cool because they actually do help. So if we go and look at, although we've got my crap code, uh, but if we go look at the source code for this here, okay, that looks really nice. It, it's all like kind of stuck together, as you might say. <laughs> and what we can do is get rid of those little minuses, save that, and let's refresh the page. It looks the same, but then if we go to the view source, uh, look, it's ugly. Like the source code is ugly. So like when potential employers or just other programmers go to look at your source code, when you're coding with Flask, it can make your source code look really ugly. Like it makes you look like you're an idiot sometimes. And I've always kind of recognized that, but at the same time, I just, you know, first of all, my HTML is a lot of times pretty ugly, but it, it makes you look worse than you are. So it's almost like a purely vanity thing to do this, but it does help, I think, it, obviously. And if you, it, it is a serious thing. Uh, if you're trying to get, you know, you know, if you're showing off your projects to a potential employer and they go to look at your source code and they're like, wow, this guy is a huge mess. Uh, yeah, it's not good for you. You know, they might not be making the realization of what's going on in the back end to cut that, like the back end is generating the HTML. It wasn't you that wrote that. So anyway, um, that's pretty cool. And really the final thing that I'll show you guys, uh, is, uh, logic. Now we've already been over logic and we're not going to spend any more time other than me just saying, Hey, come to the docs and look at logic because there are certain things that you have here. Uh, that you don't have in Python, and there are some things here that you don't have in Python, or that you have in Python, but you don't have in Jinja, and then there's some things that you have in Jinja, but you don't have in Python. So just keep that in mind. Jinja is not like some sort of Python <laughs> f f uh, language for HTML, right? It's its own language. It does its own stuff. It just happens to work really nicely with Flask and Django <laughs> and probably some other frameworks. Anyway, uh, so, so you have these bits of logic that are actually available to you is in all that sounds pretty normal and or not simple stuff. Uh, then you've got these operands here, converts everything to strings and concatenates them pretty useful. Uh, this is, you can call a callable, uh, that's really not much different than Python. And this is to get the attribute literally never needed it, but it's there if you need it. Um, and then there's some more stuff here. Again, I'll just reiterate, it's always a good idea to just go through the docs from time to time. The stuff that I'm telling you is stuff that I find myself using and myself needing from time to time, but you might be totally different, right? So your needs might not be the same needs as mine. So what I say, hey, I use this a lot, so check this out, may not actually apply to you. So anyways, definitely check out the documentation just from time to time, just literally just like scroll through it and just read the headings and see if anything sounds interesting to you. So anyway, that's it for the, basically just the simple Jinja templating stuff. Um, next up, we're gonna be talking about dynamic URLs, which are, I thought it would be on this page. It probably is, I'm just missing it. Um, but they're actually called converters in Flask. I'm not quite sure what the origin of converters was. I wanna call it dynamic URLs. But anyway, that's what we're going to be talking about in the next tutorial. Uh, so stay tuned for that. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever on this tutorial, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, the subscriptions, and until next time.